In this video, I will show you behind the scenes footage from a classical Japanese dance, photo and video shoot. And I will explain why I like filming handheld and show you how I get rid of shakes, my camera settings and how I stabilize the footage in post. Today's model is Asaki-san, and you can see the final production video on her YouTube channel, which I will link in the description below. She is wearing a style of kimono called furisode, which are worn by young unmarried women on special occasions. I had an opportunity to film her performing a traditional Japanese dance at Zōjōji Temple. You might be familiar with Zōjōji Temple since it is one of the most visited temples in Tokyo. I chose an area just south of the temple which is a lot less crowded. Check description for the exact location. I also filmed a few scenes at Shiba Park which is right beside the temple. We were lucky that plum trees were starting to bloom at the time of filming in early February. Handheld footage can immerse your audience and make them feel the energy of the scene. I can freely move with the dancer and make the audience feel as if they're on location experiencing the dance. In this video shoot, I had about one and a half hours before the sun went down. If I used a gimbal, I would have had to mount the camera, balance the gimbal, and that would cost a lot of time. If I wanted to change the lens, then I'd have to rebalance the gimbal and take some more time. Sometimes I like to use vintage lenses which don't have autofocus and without a follow focus or focus polar, it's almost impossible to shoot manual lenses on a gimbal. Not to mention gimbals are an extra item to carry around and for my run and gun style of filming, I like to keep my bags as light as possible. Without a gimbal, I can move freely and quickly frame my shots exactly how I want them, not having to think about how the gimbal is going to react to my hand movements. This way, I have way less chance of missing important moments in fast moving scenes. I normally set my camera to standard stabilization when filming handheld. This gets rid of most hand jitters if I pair it with any Sony lens. When I need to do walking shots, then I switch over to active stabilization, which I don't always use because it crops in on the frame quite a bit, at least on my camera. I try to use wider lenses when filming handheld. I like 24mm and 35mm, but will occasionally go up to 50mm. Wider lenses will make shakes less obvious and will give you more room to stabilize in post. If necessary, I will shoot at 60 frames per second. Normally, I like to shoot 24 because of the nice motion blur, but I switch over to 60 when necessary. If you slow down your footage to 40%, you will notice way less camera movement in the final video. Sometimes I also use the camera strap and put tension on my neck. This can minimize jitters as well. I also hold my breath while on rec. When I hold my breath, it makes my arms stable, but do this at your own risk. I currently don't have it on my camera, but a top handle can really minimize shakes on low angle shots. Rigs, handles, and external batteries will also make your camera heavier, which will reduce small jitters. show you how I stabilize footage in post in DaVinci Resolve. I use Resolve but you're gonna find similar features in Premiere Pro or Final Cut and this is how it looks like without stabilization. There is a bit of camera shake since I'm walking backwards so um, I'm going to go into stabilization I'm going to leave the mode at perspective, cropping ratio 0.5, and then I'm going to move the 
smooth to 0.5 and then I'm going to hit stabilize. So it's going to analyze the clip and then stabilize. Just going to wait for it to render so that I can play it smoothly. With perspective, um, sometimes you get warping, uh, especially around the edges of the clip. So you have to watch out for that. And that's what I'm going to see by playing back right now. And yeah, you're going to... You can see there's quite a bit of warping around the edges, so I'm not going to use perspective. I'm going to switch over to similarity and then hit stabilize. Um, there are three options, perspective, similarity, and translation. So I move from perspective to similarity, and if that doesn't work, I go to translation. So let's see how similarity is going to work. Let's play that back. I think it looks a lot better than perspective. Um, let me just play it one more time. Yeah, I think I'm okay with it. Um, I'm gonna use similarity, and if you see if you see some warping still, then um, you should just go to translation. And if that doesn't work, usually what I do is I just abandon the clip. Um, and one other thing that you can do is that, as you can see, I shot this at 60 frames per second. So you can actually slow this down uh, to 40% to get smoother footage. Um, actually, I would use this clip as is at 100%, but I'm going to show you what it does by reducing the speed to 40%. This is what it looks like at 40%. It's much, much smoother. I should also mention that um, Sony users have uh, an option called Catalyst Browse Software released by Sony. And um, it's yielded some amazing results for some people, but I don't use it. I just hate how slow it is and how cumbersome it is to use. But if you have really shaky footage, uh, it might be an option for you. All right, there you have it. Don't get me wrong, gimbals are great and I use it from time to time. But for me, handheld shooting gives me more flexibility and I get really nice organic footage to work with. I'll end the video by playing a slideshow of some of the photos I took. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.